Good day, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Influencers in Our Culture. Today, we have a special guest. We have a farmer, a businessman, an innovator, a researcher. Welcome, Mr. Burgess. How are you? Thank you, Mr. Williams, and well, hello to your viewers. Yes, thank you very much. So, Mr. Burgess, could you summarize your journey in agriculture and how rewarding has it been for you? Well, I left high school um, and went straight into UWI St. Augustine in the, when it was in the very early days of um, changing over from ICT to a degree granting institution. Um, that was a very rewarding time in Trinidad at the time, in the early 60s, um, one of the most enjoyable periods of my life. And from then on, I went on to do a further degree at um, McGill University in Canada. I've had this interest in agriculture uh, as a result of my family's interest um, in agriculture. My grandfather, father, as well, and they were all involved in the field. Um, I left university and again found a very uh, good fit in the Sugar Research um, Institute. It was in the, the Sugar Manufacturers Association Research Department. And there I uh, met some very interesting and uh, capable colleagues and mentors who uh, gave me full opportunity to uh, develop my skills as a researcher and we achieved some notable successes during that period um, of the late 60s, early 70s. Um, we had some challenges and for a time I had charge of the variety breeding program. Uh, my first job really was to look about weed control and I've had that um, interest virtually all my life, uh, my working life. Um, but during that time, one of our main challenges was to overcome two sudden disease outbreaks, which hit the sugar industry in the 70s. And we had a very interesting, very um, intense time at that because we had a lot of conflicting advice from all over the place. Um, we decided we were going to follow a certain uh, path of tackling this problem and we promised ourselves that we would overcome the problem in so many years by following a certain course of action which we did and we were very successful in overcoming that challenge. Um, we also did, I also was involved in work with um, improving the general soil and water management in sugarcane. It's only a pity that a lot of those um, initiatives and directions which we recommended them were taken into, uh, into, into, into force. They were never put into force. Um, my big disappointment is the decline in that industry and the many missed opportunities which um, cause the industry to be in the state that it is now. Um, I can well remember that during the 60s and 70s, uh, people used to, many of the successful industries in Central America, in some of the, in Mauritius for example, that are held up to us as examples, came to us for advice and help, and I personally was involved in several um, consultative visits to these countries and um, they have benefit from our expertise, from our variety development, and so on. Um, subsequent to the sugar experience, which took some 17, 18 years of my working career, um, I, I, I went to Nigeria and worked for a short time there. It's a very interesting and a different country, a different part of the world with um, a completely different culture and everything. Um, my family had the, 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 the good fortune to accompany me there for a little while and it was quite, um, quite rewarding for us. Um, subsequent to that, I joined a 
multinational uh, uh, multinational company involved in the supply of agricultural inputs, Mayan Baker, which some people may remember, which morphed into Ron Palenque, and from Ron Palenque, Ron Palenque was taken over by Bayer. Um, during that time, I worked on the development of um, some of their agrochemical products, and one of them in particular became uh, was in fact we were leaders in that particular respect in developing uh, particularly a particular herbicide for use in in right throughout the world in sugarcane. Um, since then, I've been I have made an attempt to made several attempts to retire, but I keep going because of the interest and um, my hobby, my hobby which is. Uh, or by avocation, which is um, development of fruit trees, exotic fruit trees. And I've introduced a few of these into the island and I've been um, rewarded to see that at least one farm has taken up the, um, on a commercial basis, on a large commercial basis, my introduction and, um, and development of a particular tree crop. Um, so I'm still here after many years, um, over I think um, 50 years in the field and um, I keep going on. Excellent. Just want you to touch the point because you mentioned the exotic fruit tree. Mm -hmm. What are some of the exotic fruit tree which you see Jamaica could use to become more pro productive? Okay, looking at other countries um, and looking at our climates and um, uh, our varying climates and other types, I think we have opportunities to do um, several different types of fruit trees. Um, one of the crops that I introduce is, is, is a, well, I introduce a variety of nasemary, which I think should take the um, should have some commercial uh, application because of its extended shelf life and its excellent eating qualities and size. The other fruit crop that I introduced it was here but very rarely seen and it, most people saw it was it didn't bear. So I managed to find a treatment and got this tree to, to be able to bear and that is the long run and I introduced the long yard sometime in, this, in, the, um, in the 90s and it's been taken up by a particular farm and um, they produce the best quality long yards in the island. Um, I have also been assisting and working with the government and with for example people like Mr Johnson in exchange of Budwood and in also um, testing their introductions on my little farm to see how well they do. And um, I recently had a, I, what I think may be a useful indication of a couple of lychee varieties that may be more adapted to our climate than, than others. Um, and there are a number of other fruit trees. Um, uh, one which is useful for dooryard growers, for small, um, a small lots of land, very nice little tree I think called Jabaticaba or Brazilian grape, Brazilian cherry. Um, I have several varieties of those, um, which from the time I was in, lived in Mandeville, I um, you know, was making available to people. And there are a few others, you know, from time to time, which I've tried to introduce. Even the, even the famous durian, um, I remember a friend of mine sending some seeds, at that time it was legal to send in seeds and I got some seeds of this thing in and I've um, at least left one at the public gardens and I keep trying to propagate it. But there are a few trees like this which um, you know keep my interest and um, network with other people to get these out into the, into the, um, market. Into, into the market. But in terms of other commercially 
um, viable things. I think one of the things we should look at is certainly um, avocado, avocado pear. Um, there are certain mangoes as well. My late departed friend, Vin Brown, um, introduced quite a few of these, or kept quite a few of these mangoes in his collection. And um, I mean, their variety and types of mangoes that are available these days uh, are much improved to what they were in former years. There's been a lot of breeding going on and a lot of very, very nice mangoes available now. Um, those are a few, there are others, but <laughs> I can't think of yours. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Burgess, I know that you're a director at Carib Agro and your company specializes in non-GMO seeds. Right. Do you have a red onion variety and sweet corn? Could you elaborate and speak, speak, speak on those two crops because they are high in demand? Yeah, well, <clears throat> those, um, those varieties came as a result of, um, of us looking on the international market. We, tradition we have a traditional source of seeds, which is the Mediterranean climate. But we decided to take a look at some of the tropical regions and we looked at Brazil and Thailand and um, the red onion comes from Brazil and it is in a way climate adapted because it can be planted in almost any time of year. Um, it's a very, um, it's one of the leading varieties in the tropical world. Um, and it has both disease and pest tolerance that the other varieties don't have. And um, it's a good yield and, and becoming popular with farmers. The corn, as we usually do um, with all new varieties, we did extensive replicated trials with these. And um, just as we used to do in sugarcane, you know, we have to look for um, what will do best in our conditions. And we came up with a couple of varieties that look quite promising and which we are um, propagating now. Farmers seem quite happy with the development of these, um, with the um, production from these varieties, uh, which, as again, as I said, we, we, we do look at, um, in particular my colleague Mr. Scott, looks for um, sources, new sources of seed and um, tries to develop them to give us. I think we're way behind other countries in this respect, in respect of our varieties of, of, of crops. And um, this is what we're basically trying to do, to get these improved and higher yielding varieties into the island. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Burgess, can you kindly comment on the state of agriculture and how can farmers become more profitable? Okay, it's been, I, I, I first joined um, sugar research in, in the mid 60s when sugar production was at its peak. And um, we know where that is now. And I we have seen this decline in our crops. Um, you name it, cocoa, uh, bananas. There was a time when, you know, bananas was one, as a supplier, bananas was one of our main, um, our main um, clients in terms of takeoff of, 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 of agricultural inputs. Same with sugar. And the decline has been very distressing to see. As I said, we have had a, had a lot of missed opportunities and we have not kept up with um, current research. I think one of our big problems is um, a decline in our research capabilities and in the funding of agriculture generally. Most of our competing countries, if you look at Costa Rica, if you look at Dominican Republic, um, the, the kind of support and, uh, and support both from the government and from the direction of investment That's true. that has gone on in these, those countries. I mentioned earlier on Gos Costa Rica and Guatemala. At one time, Costa Rica was producing probably one-fourth of the amount of sugar that we were producing at the time. 
and the farms and the whole agricultural system was, the uh, whole agriculture, sugarcane agriculture, was way behind ours. No, they have, particularly in a place like, like Indo Central American countries, sugar is one of, sugar, sugar cane growing is one of the most profitable and uh, progressive agricultural enterprises because not only do they grow sugar cane, but they have, have diversified the sugar production. The main source of income is now, of all things, not sugar or alcohol, but electricity, electricity production. And I've seen other industries, other sugar industries do this. But, all right, not, not crying over spilt milk, there is opportunity for, as I say, for tree crops. I think we need to, um, to press on with the, um, with the chocolate, the cocoa development. Um, we had at one time a very prosperous cocoa board and um, also very good production. I think we should go back to that. We have um, opportunities in pineapple. Um, some big enterprises have taken this up. And um, the, at one time we had an idea, we, we, there's, there's the idea of satellite farms, works very well in the broiler industry. Um, this model could go to other agricultural crops. There are some large um, investors um, who need a lot of assistance and help. One of our problems in agriculture is a shortage of um, qualified and trained agricultural um, agricultural persons, agricultural personnel. I remember being in Dominican Republic once and seeing a conference of entomologists, entomologists, the Society of Entomologists in Dominican Republic. There were about 30 people in the room. If there was a conference of entomologists in Jamaica, you could probably count on the fingers of one hand how many people would be there. Um, it's just not sufficient there's not a sufficient um, critical mass of trained agricultural people in the island. And I think the, 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 the kind of support, I mean, I remember once in Costa Rica, I was passing by and saw a large canal. And I asked the people, what the people, what asked the um, persons I was with, how much does water cost? How much does this water cost? And he says, what do you mean cost? <laughs> you know? I said, mm -hmm. Water doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> it's laid on. <laughs> and that is a kind of, 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 of system or the kind of arrangement that we have to compete against and which we should set our house in order to compete properly yes. and to support our agriculture. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and I think with with, with vegetable production, our little initiative with seeds goes only so far. I mean, you know, we could go much further in supporting, agro in supporting the, 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 the agricultural research station. Um, I worked for a short time at Borders as a holiday job. And at the time, um, I was fortunate to meet Dr. Leckie, people like Dr. McLaren, Dr. Richards, Dr. Alexander. Um, the place was well staffed, the morale was high, and um, I'd, I would very much like to see that in the government service again, um, where the, 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 the level of support and, and um, the, 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 the spirit of the researchers and, uh, and their support is, 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 is what it used to be. And I think we have felt, we have fallen down on that. Um, the people who are there are working manfully, but with limited, very limited resources. Yes, most definitely. I know that you have covered a lot of the questions, mm -hmm. but I'm going to zone in finally, finally on this. What's your advice to policy makers in this field of agriculture, you know, that can affect farmers, businesses in agriculture? I'd say a couple of things. One of the, we have, we, we have very many deficiencies and shortages. And one of the things that I have seen recently is 
major investors going into sugar, into the um, into the, the the agriculture, into vegetable production, and into agriculture generally. And the the investors are one of your very scarce resources. I think they should be given every every support. Support. One of the yes. things too that as a um, as a group, agricultural suppliers are working on is relief on some of the taxes on agricultural inputs. That's high, that's high. Um, yeah, those that's are, really you know, relief of GCT yes. on, on things like yes, seeds, sir. on equipment, something that is brought up ad nauseum and we don't seem to see anything, any, any, um, any, 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 any progress in this. I hope that we can, we can, you know, strengthen the hand of the Minister of Agriculture to, to see that some of these, um, of these disincentives are removed and that you know I know about the Washington consensus on all of that as far as um, subsidies and that sort of thing are concerned but for some reason countries in the region seem to be able to support the agriculture to a much better level a much better um, uh, the, the, the investors are supported to a much greater degree than we are able to do in Jamaica. And I think that's one of the things we have to do. I mean, there's things I can talk about, like I mentioned briefly the, the question of water, um, the cost of water. The, the, one of the things we did um, when I was in research was to look at the um, situation with the salinity. We did a salinity survey on St. Catherine and Climate Plains. And um, we pointed out at the time the, the the problem that we're having with this and what the solutions could be and you know it's just on the shelf somewhere fortunately unfortunately um worked at one time on recycling sewage water initiatives like that have just fallen flat and it's unfortunate that you know we see ourselves in a situation where when I take my few little nails berries to sell at the supermarket and I go around the back and I see the amount of things coming in from farin, it really is distressing. Disarming, yes. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Uh, did I answer your question or did I ramble off a bit? Um, no, you answered everything. <laughs> okay. um, Mr. Burgess, I, I want to give you a special thanks and pay my dues because I know that you have, we are one of the persons who have contributed significantly to this sector and for the success of this sector. So I'm giving you this credit and special thanks to be on this program. I appreciate it. Thank you. One love. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I enjoyed the having a little talk. Okay. Yes,